everyone. Welcome back. It's Uncle Destiny here with you. And it's time to see what the reading for February 2022 has for all of us. Now this month, as we have come to celebrate it, is Valentine's Day. It's also the last, hmm, shall we say, full month that we have of winter. Because in March we have the equinox, so it will be changing there. Equally, it is also coming to the, in the February, month of February we come out of a Mercury retrograde. And once more, we've seen so much change and shift and thought-provoking experiences during this retrograde. What have we learned from this time and what are we taking in as we go further forward? As we quickly approach the seasonal new year. So in a, hopefully by the time this airs, we will be in the lunar new year for Chinese zodiac, and that'll be the year of tiger, which is a water tiger. And I would remind you that oftentimes water is seen as a symbol for emotions. So how, what is the ferocity of the emotions we're facing this next year? That's something to think about. So let's go ahead and get the ancestors in and the Orishas and spirits and see what they have to say for the rest of us. Alrighty, so we have thrown the bones, we've got the dice, and we've got the adinkra. And so the starting with the adinkra to provide a co overall context and lens to, this, to what we're going to be dealing with, we've got the ore. So it represents strength, com com confidence, and pers persistence. So if you think about it, the oar is what you use to move the boat, and it takes repeated motions for the boat to be able to be moved across the water. Depending on the speed at which you paddle will affect also how quickly you move across it. And that is also something that takes time and that takes consistency and prolonged strength, and strength that's about endurance, not just about speed. It's not about convenience and short-term thinking, it's about length of time. So as we look at anything that the bones are saying, we're looking at where's the strength, where is the endurance, where is the persistence, and how surely do you hold on to the oar? Because if you lose the oar, you're either having to use your arm or you're stuck sitting in the water. Over here on the dice, we have the four. So we're looking also at the influence of the fourth house, which means home, family, roots, and your emotional foundation. So again, consider what the ore is telling you about moving through water. And this is talking about our emotional foundation. And as you heard earlier in the opening, I talked about this next year being the Chinese Lunar New Year being that of the tiger, the water tiger. So this is all very much centered in our emotional selves. So when we look at the bones, they are quite scattered here. And at this point, this is the home bone, this is the work bone, and this is the um, society or family bone. Now, I'll just start here since we're here. We have one of the rib bones directly over there connecting easily into the work bone with also the quartz crystal here. So what does this mean? There is, even though they are separated, they are connected by this band of inspiration, this band of the expansion and contraction of the lungs, which is what's represented by the rub bone that holds the lungs in position. So our sense of family, which might be staying kind of horizontal, even to the horizon, and our work, which is ex accelerating upward into the stratosphere, or downward, is going to be influencing by these two. They sort of create almost a right angle at it. So the ask, so what does that mean? It means that our work can be inspirational to our family setting, and our family setting can also be inspirational to our work. And I again remind you that our work is not just what we're doing to pay the bills, it's what we are here to foster in the world around us. So how is our family sense also fostering what we do and how we interact with each other? In the same thing, how is our work influencing and fostering how we interact with our sense of family? And family is not just the biological family. It is also the family of intention. It is the family that we live in as a community and a society as well. And we get to the quartz piece, which is telling us very much about the crystallized memory. 
how do we look at it? Which is the very important part about what we're going to be facing here is like, what are we looking at and how are we looking at these two influence and relationship to each other? Because they are in relationship to each other. They are not purely separate entities. Yes, we might have to look at them uh, to do an in-depth analysis at one, but we then bring them back into relationship with each other. They do not stay purely as a single entity. And then a family in its own way is not about a single entity either. It is made up of, again, those who are connected by blood and bone and DNA, as well as those who are connected by intention of the soul, of mental and emotional. And this also includes our pets as well. And there's a lot of inspiration cushioning that here. As we move down here into the home bone, you'll notice that we also have the copper piece here and amongst much more of the... Um, support bones and we do have the broken rib bone right there which and it's at its, at its end it's a terminated and it's not focused into the bone so i would be very much focusing on to what's going on with our homes and as this has the dice also indicated home is also a very key point here so what are we doing and making sure that the our homes are in good state and well as recognizing what have we emotionally invested in our homes and has our time with our home come to an end? I say that not that everyone's going to be, um, that your home has to end. It may require that there needs to be a new emotional investment. And that emotional investment can come in, how are you maintaining the home? Either cleanliness, repainting, bringing in new furniture, let alone what does it mean that maybe you have outgrown where you are and now you, there is a need for change. Does not mean that home hasn't failed to do what it's doing. It means that it is time for you to find a new home to continue that process. And there are gonna be those issues around it. And it might have to do with either issues with the, if you're renting, the landlord that owns it. It might have to do with issues with the environment, such as, hey, someone wants to build a road across it. Just as much in that standpoint, there might be a fight amongst family for a home or the possession of it. So we want to be very conscious of these things. And again, what are the emotions that are going on here? Because this, as we move into this next year, it is not purely just about what is the logical, rational reasoning that's at play, what is the emotional reasoning that is at play? And what are the values that are connected with those emotions? And that's what we're going to see here with the, with the um, broken rib bone is the aspect of what are the emotions? How are they getting in play? And how do they then turn more violent? Are we, and are they being channeled inward or are they being channeled outward? Now, since we're talking about emotional foundation across all of this, and this is where we need consistency and perseverance in to find the strength that keeps us going. That is one of those things where we have to be conscious of what is also taking us off, what is being disruptive, what is leading us to a less than supportive nature for our society. Now, that does not mean that we also do not ignore the fact that there also has to be accountability and atonement. I'm going to say that again. There has to be accountability and atonement. I emphasize that strongly because part of what we are, have been seeing, what we're going forward to, is the fact that our emotions will, can make it harder for some people to actually hold accountability because they don't want to hold the emotional weight that that actually carries. So they will avoid it. And they may sort to violence by any means to avoid um, having to deal with that emotional weight. I have to be prepared for that. No matter how much we wish that they are connected to it, they may not wish to. And spirit is also saying in its own place, because it is connected here in the home, because it's a counterbalance between where do we uh, have the violence and where do we invite spirit to create support? And if anything, you notice that if you're looking at this here, that it is the spirit that is lifting up this aspect of home, while the um, rib bone is bringing it down. Or 
might even be the stake that holds the tent flap up. So it's being conscious about what our emotions are helping us uh, to either build with spirit or bring down into the darkness. We also have the shell here, which is aspects of nature. And nature is also telling us too, it's about what is the emotions we are dealing with here? How have we gotten the information from them as opposed to allowed them to run wild or avoided? So look into your emotions. It can be very difficult, but it can also be very rewarding. And again, if we are going to heal, we have to face the emotions. We have to bear that weight so that there is accountability. And thusly then atonement. Which is also something that requires strength, that requires confidence, and requires persistence. All in all... This is going to be a month of definitely being around our emotions a lot more. And again, how are we actually respecting, working with, and understanding our emotions? Not just love, just because it happens to be Valentine's Day. That happens this month. But how are we connecting with the emotions and the values that connect with those emotions to shape our world? Because we all need an apology in multiple forms and from multiple places. An apology without accountability and without atonement is hollow. So with that, I want to thank you for coming back and reading and hearing our reading. And equally... I want to wish you all well in this next season. And if you have a chance, make sure you're making the choices that are about, again, our long-term future, not just the short-term. On behalf of the ancestors, the Orishas, Lowe's gods, and the creator of all things, may you be blessed and safe. Ashe. Mm -hmm.